Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now, let's go back in history, and I'm going back to 2014. Um, one incident, of, of course, uh, that changed the way policing is uh, done in the United States with the you know, uh, vote for uh, body cameras for police officers. But it was on this day that uh, a young man, Michael Brown, was shot fatally by police officers uh, while, of course, uh, you know, out on the streets with his friend. It was an 18-year-old African-American male in Ferguson, Missouri, was shot and killed by a police officer after reportedly assaulting the officer and attempting to steal his weapon. Um, that, of course, eventually led to a protest across the United States um, that lasted for a couple of weeks. The uh, United States president back then, Barack Obama, then proposed for, um, you know, a funding for body cameras uh, Brown was accompanied by his 22-year-old friend, Dorian Johnson. And, of course, uh, the police officer, Wilson, said that an altercation ensued when Brown attacked uh, the police officer in his car and tried to take control of the gun until it was fired. There was, of course, controversy over, um, you know, the uh, Michael Brown killing, you know, seeing that he, of course, was unarmed at that time. And there wasn't enough proof. There was arguments whether he truly, you know, tried to uh, get the police officer's gun or not. Um, and of course, that sparked protests across the United States that went on for weeks. Uh, destruction of you know some property here and there. The um, um, uh, Black Lives Matter, of course, uh, conversation started all over again. And you know, the United States president back then, Barack Obama, announced the federal government would spend seventy-five million dollars on body cameras for law enforcement officers. And uh, it was one of the measures that was taken in response to Michael Brown's shooting, mostly because of the, you know, disparity with, uh, you know, what truly happened on that day. You know, was it true that he tried to attack the police officer and take his gun? Or, you know, was this just, you know, one incident more or one more incident of um, United States police officers not being able to, you know, hold themselves back when uh, the suspect was an African-American? And so, yes, on this day, Michael Brown was uh, killed in the United States. Mm. This story, you know, was very controversial because there were lots of activists and advocates behind Michael Brown regarding the story. And it was one of the most significant stories, you know, that really, really changed, began the process of changing how the U.S. justice system, you know, viewed people of yeah. color. You know, there was the issue of racial profiling, you know, the police officer involved said he saw Mike Brown and his friend walking on the sidewalk and they seemed to match the description of some um, robbery, robbery suspect. He told him to get on the sidewalk. Mike Brown reached out to him. It was just lots of details that, that, that was very conflicting. But the important point to note here is that Mike Brown was unarmed, 18 year old, walking with his friend, and yet he was shot six times. Mm. Terrible. Yeah, well, um, you know, back, but I mean, it, it, it's, it, these are things that, you know, they've been spoken about for, for you know, years, for decades, actually. Uh, racial injustice and, you know, the fact that the United States uh, police are always somehow, some way profiled black Americans different from the way that whites, you know, were profiled. Um, you know, you would also get to see a lot of other videos where you would see whites, you know, um, you know um, Americans. Um, or Caucasians rather, you know, acting very, very violently towards police and you don't get to see the same reaction that you see with a with an African-American. And so it's one of those reasons, once again, and, you know, does a gun need to go off six times if you're trying to protect yourself? Uh, does, you know, the, the, the suspect need to be, you know, fired six times? Does he need to get shot six times before you're sure that you're safe? It's, it's part of all, some of all those conversations. Um, and, um, you know, what then happens next, you know, in a case like that? Um, they've tried to, of course, and that's one of the reasons the body cameras have come into, uh, you know, as part of the policing system in, in the United States. It has helped, no doubt, um, to change, you know, and of course, uh, limit the amount of uh, the number of these incidents happening. But you still see them happen every now and then. Hmm. Um, let's uh, move on now from 2014 to 1995. Um, this day is very significant in South African history. Because when you look at where South Africa as a country is coming from regarding apartheid, you can imagine just how much segregation, injustice, that especially South African women, black women in South Africa suffered at the hands of these colonialists. And it was in distant history, um, August the 9th, 1995, that women in South Africa first celebrated a National Women's Day. Now, this day, you know, takes us all the way back to the 1950s when, you know, women in South Africa 
went on to the union buildings in Pretoria to protest against you know, the issuance of passes. So they had a pass law in South Africa back then that said that if you're a black woman, you had to have a pass at all times. Now, the idea of this pass was basically to limit freedom of movement. You know, as a black woman, you needed to have this pass, meaning that, of course, get the process of getting those passes, you can imagine how Koba Sunday would try to have made it be yep. to ensure that women, black women, do not have access to some places that are termed as white only. So these women, what they decided to do was to pick a Thursday. Now, Thursday in SE at that time was a day when, you know, women who worked as domestic help, you know, got... Yeah, it was basically like their off day at that time. So they picked a Thursday and that was to make sure that as many women as possible were able to come out. So women came out in their numbers. Um, they had, you know, this petition. About 100,000 women signed that petition that said that they were not in support of the past law um, that would go ahead to further strengthen the appetite movement. They took that to the union buildings in South Africa. About 20,000 women marched there. They stayed there silently, silently for about 30 minutes and then they began to sing a song that they had purposefully composed against the past law and against the appetite in South Africa. And um, so many years later, that, that historic event happened in 1950s. Now, many years later, August the 9th, 1995, women in South Africa, Africa came together to say that they wanted to institute a National Women's Day, you know, that this is a day where we're going to dedicate to talking about, you know, issues that affect women. And in fact, in South Africa, August, the month yeah. of August is Women's Month. It's a month where they basically celebrate, you know, women, where you have, you know, women who have, you know, power and influence in South Africa, August events where they talk about issues that affect women so it really is a power day in South Africa and in fact a power month yeah absolutely I, I um you know so so when when I see things like this you know and you know it 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 makes me feel you know bad because as legal as protests are you know we, we as Nigerians for a long time have I mean in the last couple of years or de decades have not been able to pull you know together these numbers to make a statement um, protests aren't, you know, always meant to be violent in any way. They aren't in any way meant to, you know, be destructive. You know, it's really just a combination of people, a gathering of, of thousands of people coming together to make to a, pass a message, yes. to, to pass a message to the government, you know, and, you know, if, if possible, effect change. Um, we, I don't remember if we've been able to pull 20,000, 30,000 people, 10,000 people together, you know, in one gathering. And I feel like Nigerians need to get to that place where we stop being divided by numerous conversations and just focus on what's important and come together, you know, and, you know, make a statement at some point. Anyway, we'll be going on a short break. When we come back, our first major conversation is starting up. We are going to be talking about the um, All Progressives Congress and a little court or judicial chaos that might be ensuing with the party and its leadership, May Malabuni. Uh, we'll get into that after the short break here on The Breakfast. Good morning once again.